Hey everyone, Courtney Henderson here. I'm the digital editor for FamilyTreeMagazine.com. And I thought today we would talk about kind of a fun topic. It's the hidden meanings of gravestone symbols. And full disclosure, I am not an expert in this field. There, there are people that are, and I would encourage you, if you're really interested in this subject, to check out some other resources online. This presentation is more about ancestor research. If you're on Find a Grave, if you're on Billion Graves, you find a picture with a symbol carved that you just don't know what it means or you just like to know more, or you just want a kind of brief overview of gravestone symbols, this would be a really great place to start. This does not cover even close to all the symbols that are out there, nor does it cover everything that's in the article that I will link to in the video description. And you can find that on familytreemagazine.com. But this is a pretty good overview. Okay, how did gravestone symbolism begin? Well, as we know, this practice have has been around for millennia. The Egyptians were doing it. But for our purposes, if you're researching in um, America or Europe, then the practice really became very popular where it was just sort of more of these hidden meanings uh, for them from those cipher loving Victorians. They loved a good hidden meaning. They loved symbolism. So we're going to decipher some of those here in a little bit. But um, it's kind of important to, to take a second and think that a person wanted this on their tombstone for a reason or their family wanted it on their tombstone for a reason. So it, it might be a virtue that the person exemplified, a value that, that they held close, or a nod to how they earned their living. A word of caution, uh, you know, not only am I not an expert here, but tombstone scholars still debate on meanings of certain symbols. So... Uh, this is just scratching the surface and you could have done your own research and cover your uncover your own meanings and we're also like i said talking mainly mainly about research in america and europe of course symbols have different meanings throughout the world but i i think that you'd be surprised there are some symbols that cross cultures and, and they mean the same thing so I think it's important to take a look at your ancestors' tombstones and you, you might uncover something about them that you didn't know before and it was, it was just right there the whole time. Okay, so the first symbol we have is an arch or a gate. Pretty self-explanatory. It's the passage into the next life. You will also see tombstones that might be in the shape of an arch, but this here, as you can see, is an open gate I'm sure it's probably the gates of heaven welcoming that person in. Acorns have a lot of meanings. Um, a few are prosperity, power, triumph, strength, independence. Again, one of those symbols that could signal a virtue that the person had or a, a personality that they had. Anchor. Uh, the anchor has signified hope for a very long time. Sometimes you'll find a hope, or sorry, sometimes you'll find an anchor with a heart. Um, it also could be a sailor or someone that was in the U.S. Navy, so that will take a little research to find out more about that ancestor. Angels. It's a given. They're everywhere and across many cultures. They're God's messengers and guardians. This one is dropping flowers that could signify grief and mourning. Sometimes they're pointing to heaven. Sometimes they're looking to heaven. That's a symbol of rejoicing. Anvil or hammer. These types of symbols were, of course, popular more in the medieval times. Obviously, a blacksmith, you can see here, we have a skull surrounded by all the tools that a blacksmith would use. Okay, a basket is a symbol of fertility or a maternal bond. This to me looks very Victorian. You can see the basket there at the bottom. The wheat um, has a, a significance. The IAV has a significance. It's all kind of related to fertility, motherhood, loyalty, and that kind of thing. So Victorians can look right at this and, and know exactly what the person was trying to say. 
bat wings. So I didn't find tons of examples of bats being carved onto tombstones. I did find lots of wings. They would normally either have this death's head, which we'll talk a little bit more about, or they would have an hourglass, which we'll also talk about. Sometimes though, I noticed that the, the death heads or the hourglasses would have angel wings. These are very clearly bat wings. I don't know if they're, um, if that signifies something very different. Um, this, what for my research, misfortune, maybe if, you know, if you have uh, any more insight, please share them in the comments. But for right now, I, could, I couldn't really tell what the significance was between using more angel-like bird wings or these bat wings. A beehive. There are a couple of different possibilities here. Um, one is the, a member of the Independent Order of Odd Fellows, or that's abbreviated as IOOF. That was just a fraternal society. It was popular back in the 1920s. A member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they will use beehives on their tombstones sometimes, or it could be just another virtue or personality trait of the person. They could have been industrious or hardworking. So this tombstone is a bench, and they are inviting the person to stop and mourn or contemplate and I kind of like the idea of, of buying a tombstone that also has a use. <laughs> that's just, that's just how I like to think about things, but you know, other people get a use out of it. I don't know. I kind of appreciate that. Here's a bird. Uh, we will go into another type of bird, a dove. This looks like it might be a dove only because it has an olive branch in its mouth, but a bird is just the flight of the soul. A book. This example here is the Bible. As you can see, it's turned to a psalm. If it isn't obviously a Bible, if it doesn't have a cross on it and it's just a book, it could just represent the book of life. I did also notice um, several examples. It'll have a book with a quill and that signifies that the person was a writer. Skull and crossbones. No, a pirate is not buried here. I mean, maybe, but just a really popular symbol for death and mortal remains. And you will find this throughout several centuries. It's a very common uh, symbol. Candles. Now, the examples that I came across were from Jewish cemeteries and it can, the candles and the, also the candles that I found, if you do find one, a whole candle that just represents life. The ones that I found, as you can see in this example, were broken. And I found another example where they were also broken, which just means it's the end of life. A church or a hand holding a cross. The church examples that I found were fairly modern. I think this is a little bit of an older example of someone who was just very passionate about ministry or possibly a pastor or a minister. Clock or hourglass, just the march of time. And this example of a winged hourglass, that's been around. I think they have examples of mosaics from Pompeii that have this winged hourglass, just, you know, time flies, life is short. I did also find examples of clocks that were carved and they were carved at the hour of death. And I did link to a gentleman's blog post who covered some of those from New England. And there's some beautiful examples there. So I highly recommend you go and take a look. Some really nice, nice photos. Clover could be three leaf or four leaf. The three leaf usually represent Christian Trinity. It also could be possible, possible Irish ancestry. Okay, a column. This example, the column is unbroken. So that could represent a complete and full life. You'll see several examples of the columns broken, like broken off or the other half might be missing or, or laying next to it. And that just can symbolize a life cut short or a sudden death. So that would definitely be worth researching if you've come across that for your ancestor. Here's the dove we were talking about in Christianity that can represent the Holy Spirit, or there's also a little more of a universal symbol of, of a dove representing peace. 
a fern. This is one of those um, Victorian uh, flower languages that we were talking about. So it can represent sincerity, humility, or solitude. So again, back in Victorian times, people would know exactly what this person was trying to say or the personality traits of this person. Four fingers pointing. This is an interesting one that I had not seen before. I actually found two examples. So if the four finger is pointing down, that is supposed to represent God reaching down for the soul. If they're pointing up, that's supposed to be the soul's passage to heaven. Fruit, uh, fairly universal, it's just abundance, plentiful, kind of the whole cornucopia idea. A handshake could mean welcoming of a soul into heaven, or if one looks a little more masculine, one looks a little more feminine, that could represent a special bond between spouses. A harp, this could also be another symbol for Irish ancestry. It could be represent worship, someone who maybe loved to sing or, or do praise music, music to God. So any of those things the harp could represent. A heart, this photo was taken, um, it's of, I believe an 18th century box tombstone. And as you see from left to right, we have an hourglass, a heart, a skull, and then the crossbones at the bottom. So the heart could represent a blissful soul that was more in the colonial era or romantic love, which Victorian era up until today. Horses, I could not find any examples online of horses. That doesn't mean that you won't come across them. They could represent courage or generosity. They could also represent a uh, membership in, in the Brotherhood of Teamsters and their symbol is a, a two-headed horse and they're each looking in the opposite direction. So if you come across that specific symbol, good indication that your ancestor was a teamster. Lambs. Usually a very popular motif for children's graves, all, all the things, purity, gentleness, innocence. These are always so precious and heartbreaking to see um, when you're walking through a cemetery, but um, fairly common for, for children. A lamp, again, kind of a universal knowledge, spiritual immortality, and this is a carving here of, of two lamps and they have flames. And I just, I don't know, I just think this is really cool. It looks like it's kind of on a gate surrounding, surrounding a tombstone. Lilies, I know it's a little hard to see. This is a hand holding calla lilies. So one is open and then the one kind of more to the left is closed. And Calla lilies supposedly specifically meant marriage and fidelity. Uh, more general lilies represent innocence and purity, resurrection, or a lily of the valley is innocence and humility. Oak leaves, again, like kind of the same idea with the acorns. Here we have the oak and the oak leaves. Oaks, you know, strong, stability, and endurance. Again, just telling you something about that person or what the family thought about that person, which is great. An olive tree, peace, reconciliation between God and man. Just a couple of more. Again, I feel very much kind of this, maybe Victorian olive trees, of course, go back a lot further. But again, just that whole idea of, of flora kind of representing a personality trait. Okay, I cannot find where this tombstone exists, but it's super cool. It is this Egyptian motif and it has this giant, this is all carved and it has this giant palm tree and that, and also, or palm leaves, which were in the Bible, uh, that can re uh, represent life conquering death and resurrection. You'll also notice on either side of the palm tree, we have broken obelisks. So that could represent that sort of that column idea of, of a life being cut short. Here's an example of a carved phoenix. 
like we talked about, several cultures recognize the phoenix as meaning resurrection or rebirth, very popular motif for tombstones. Pineapple. Pineapple has represented hospitality for a very, very long time. Also prosperity, perfection. So if you see this on your ancestor's tombstone, it tells you a little bit about them. Maybe they were warm and welcoming. Maybe they were prosperous, all of those things. Roses. Oh, Victorians love the roses. Lots of different meaning. Love, beauty, virtue, motherhood. If they see them, if you see them intertwined, could be a strong bond. If you see a little rosebud, that could be someone who died in youth. A shield, again, with the resurrection message, also life conquering death. You'll also kind of find these sometimes as smaller decorations on a larger tombstone. A sphinx, that doesn't take a lot of explanation. It's been around for a very long time. It, it represents all these things, courage, honor, and power. Again, you find this on your ancestor's tombstone. It's going to tell you a lot about their personality. A thistle, sorrow and remembrance could be potential Scottish ancestry. An urn, just the passing of life, the death of the flesh, the leaving the, the soul leaving that behind. Urns, again, pretty popular in cemeteries. The sculptures, you'll see them a lot. Winged skull or winged death head, death's head. This mortal remains of the deceased, super, super popular, especially in colonial times. You'll find these in a lot of, on a lot of tombstones up um, in New England. And finally, we have the willow, the weeping willow, mourning, earthly sorrow. Weeping willows are in cemeteries a lot. I don't, they just represent sadness. For obvious, for obvious reasons. Okay, and that does it. Please share in the comments if you found any unusual tombstone symbols and you have a, or you have a great story about finding one and uncovering more about your ancestor. Please check out the article that this is based on over on familytreemagazine.com and I will link to it in the video description. Please take a second, subscribe to our channel and be sure and watch more genealogy videos. Thanks so much.